Bullet Train was was okay. Nothing wrong with Bullet Train. I, I mean this, sometimes I say this in a disrespectful way. I mean, I mean this in a respectful way. I think if you're 14 or 15 years old, um, Bullet Train could be your favorite movie of all time. With no negativity whatsoever. In the same way that, that Boondock Saints was that for like my generation. Um, it's stylish. It's it's fun. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with it. I also watched uh, Bros, and that's how you know I'm an ally. I watched Bros on an airplane. I didn't realize. I mean, I could have known. I guess I could have surmised this. I mean, uh, the uh, aluminum tubes surrounded by strangers. I didn't realize there'd be multiple scenes of people sucking each other's dicks openly, doing stuff with their butts. You know, like as. I, I, that's something I, I didn't know you could watch on an airplane. But I, I mean, honestly, while I was doing it, I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm opening minds on this airplane. I thought the movie was okay. I thought Bros was okay. I will say then I watched, um, well, on the way, on the flight home, I watched Best in Show. Love it. I've seen it a million times. Love that movie. Um, love Christopher Guest in general, of course. I also watched Game Night, which I had already seen before, but I'll watch anything with Jesse Plemons, and I don't mean to get sidetracked here. You see the tweet that went viral that was like, how does this guy keep getting cast in movies? He must have, like, blackmail material on all the Hollywood executives, and it was a picture of Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons is a fucking insanely great actor. Like, what is wrong with you? He's incredible. Who Who's going after Jesse Plemons on on Twitter for getting cast and stuff. He makes everything he's in better. Then I watched, um, well, I should say I put on uh, Trainwreck, which I heard was a good comedy and had never seen. I'm kind of Amy Schumer agnostic. I'm not violently opposed to Amy Schumer. I'm, she's not my favorite comedian. I thought I'll give it a chance. Uh, first five seconds of the movie, she's pretending to be drunk and she's like, that's not your deck. No, your dick doesn't end. Why is your dick so big? And I was just like, I can't watch this. It's just too much. It wasn't that it was like... It wasn't the material in it was like not okay. I was just like... It's too much. I don't know how else to explain it. You know, you ever have like... <laughs> I don't know if it's just a hot button issue for me for whatever reason. Ever have a friend who has like one drink and then pretends to be insanely hammered and you're like, why are you doing that? I get that it's a movie, like she's not... I blasted him. Like she's not gonna actually get hammered to play someone who's hammered, but her fake drunk act was, it was just, uh, I don't know. I couldn't handle it at the time. Also, the guy that sat directly in front of me on the airplane did not use the Seatback Entertainment, which is fine. It's actually great to not use Seatback Entertainment because the Seatback Entertainment gets interrupted every five seconds to tell you um, that it's light drizzle in the destination you're going to be at in four hours. However, he pulled out his tablet and he watched Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston murder mystery one. He watched the whole movie, didn't chuckle to himself for even a second. Movie ended, credits popped up, Closed the app, clicked on Murder Mystery 2, didn't even give himself five minutes to, like, see where we were on the flight, like, how much time was left, you go to the bathroom or anything like that, he was just like, run it back, Murder Mystery 2, immediately. And he watched the entire Murder Mystery 2, um, again, completely, openly joyless. Not a single guffaw, or even like, um, heavy breathing or anything. It was great. I'll watch a movie during Descent, I don't give a shit. Well, do, once you got 15 minutes left in the flight, it's still an hour before you get off the damn airplane. It takes forever, you, like, you land, then you got a taxi to the damn, uh, jetway. That can take you, like, another 15 minutes, and everybody... I don't understand... I don't want it to be like an airplane food bit. But like, if we, there's a, a, a tragedy of the commons. If we all stopped getting up 
as soon as the seatbelt signs came off, then none of us would have to stand with our necks twisted all awkwardly under the overhead bins. If you just had faith that like everybody's going to go in order, then it would be clear in the aisles. You would, when it's your turn in the aisle, you would walk out, you would take three seconds and grab your overhead stuff, and then you would walk off the plane. But instead, Everybody's like, I gotta get my overhead stuff immediately to save half a second when I get off this thing. So they all rush the aisles. It's crazy. So now I gotta rush the aisles. Because if I don't rush the aisles, then like I gotta get out and grab my overhead stuff while people behind me are like, oh, we have dinner reservations at 7.15. I tried to do it last week, got cut off by people behind. I mean, I'm just gonna say it, if you're like... If you're seated in row 18, and then you push past someone in like row 12, just because they haven't had a chance to grab their overhead stuff, I mean, you're, you're kind of a piece of garbage. You go in order. Also, I'm, I don't want to insult Ottawa. I got no problem with Ottawa. This is my first time ever flying out of the Ottawa airport. It does have the, the I was in shambles. The boarding announcement hadn't even been made yet. And there was like a 100 person lineup at the gate. I've never seen it, but I thought people in Vancouver were stupid. No disrespect. <laughs> you don't have to get on the, you, not only do you not have to line up before the boarding announcement, you like literally can't get on the airplane until they make it. So just relax, like, but I always feel like a gangster. When everybody lines up, I'm zone three. I want to be at the front of zone three. <laughs> I'm seated in fucking in the aisle seat in row 71, but I really got to get on the airplane fast so I can get my neck pillow set up and then sit down, get completely relaxed, and then other people get on and they're like, I sit in the aisle or I sit in the middle. Oh, fine, okay. Uh, let me put my neck pillow back on. Let me, ooh, my headphones, let me get my little snacks. Oh, I'm in the window. Oh, ooh, da, da, da. Oh, okay, go ahead. Anyway. But I always feel great when everybody's in line like that, and then they call first class, and then they call families with young kids. And I'm like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> we have a child under the age of six. We're a special protected class of citizen. If you could just move slightly out of the way. Oh, yes, and I don't know. Will she cry the whole time? I don't know. I don't know. You might have to turn up Murder Mystery 2 to a slightly less comfortable volume. I don't have any control over that, I'm sorry to tell you. How much did she pay for her ticket? I mean, the same that we paid for our tickets, <laughs> which is full price. <laughs> well, I mean, she didn't pay, like we paid, but, but it wasn't free, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Did you see that the Mario movie is up to over a billion dollars? Here's the thing, though. Like, that's pretty impressive. I'm not going to deny it. But is it one of those things where it was just like one dude with a billion dollars was like, I just want to see it succeed? Or is it like maybe like a hundred million people all paid ten bucks each to see it? Because like I would say one is like a little bit more impressive than the other. But maybe that's just me. I don't want to be a hater. It was the it was a billionaire. I knew it, man. It's like how when you write a book, like you can just buy a bunch of copies to get on the New York Times bestseller list. People don't know that, but people do that with Hollywood movies all the time. Like they um they're like, "Oh, we got a new uh Tar 2 is coming out." All right, we're going to pay people uh tens of millions of dollars to go see it at the theaters and fill it up so that no normal people can actually see it. But then you see, when you read the box office numbers, you go, holy cow, Tar 2, featuring Vin Diesel saying, I am Tar. I gotta go see this, man. It made like $100 million at the box office this weekend. And when she says, it's tarring time, and then she conducts all over them, that's what those are. Is that true about the movies or is it just a bit? Oh, man. I'm not at liberty to say. A lot of people are saying it is true. To be honest with you, a lot of people are saying that. 
It is true about the books, yeah. Kibolo back there! Kingsman 2, mid as hell. Why, uh... E okay, but why? Why bring it up? What was your problem with, um... With Kingsman 2? It came out like seven years ago. Um... Nobody mentioned Kingsman 2, The Golden Circle. Not even mid, it's ass. No, Kingsman 3 is ass. Kingsman 2 is okay. It's got some cool camera tricks. Julianne Moore, always a pleasure when she brings her acting talents to the silver screen. 3 is better than 2? You're fucking high. You're one of those people who says it's over for Hollywood because the worst trailer ever was made by AI. I'm attacking you personally, even though you just said a mundane media opinion that I disagree with. It's a one, two, three. One is is good. Two is okay. And three is just like... Three must have been made by Netflix because it is, took about an 82-minute story and made it three hours long for some reason. Plus, I mean, look at the cast that they squandered. In Kingsman 3. Rafe Fiennes. Reese Ifans. Other actors and actresses that I don't remember. I think Matthew Good is in that. Not the... Not the Canadian rock star, but the... Uh, <laughs> British guy who always plays evil guys. Jiman Hansu. So true. Respectfully, Who? Matthew Good, he's in every movie, you're like, that guy's too handsome to be a good guy, but I guess he is, and then at the end of the movie, you're like, never mind. <laughs>